Hi everyone, welcome back to the series. This is actually going to be our final cording tutorial of the series. Now there will be one more video, but all that's going to be is me showing you how to build the game and then upload it to the Play Store. So, what are we going to do in this video? Well, the game is pretty much completed. Now, I've gone through, I've played it for a uh, an hour or so, and I've come up with a list of little tweaks or things that we've missed during the series. So I'll give you a quick rundown now of what's going to be covered in this video so you know whether or not any of the issues that you've encountered are to do with the to do with these. So first of all, we're going to have a mess about with our camera size and add a few more aliens in. I don't think we have enough in per level. Next, we're going to increase the speed of the aliens moving when there's less on screen. I don't think that's quite fast enough either. We also forgot to add one of the main features in, which is we need to throw the game over screen up whenever the aliens get too far down. I also noticed that we aren't actually implementing a high score anywhere, so we'll fix that. We'll also link up our mute button and our social media buttons on our main screen. Finally, we'll just add in a version number into the corner of our main menu, so if there are any issues, we can double check that our users are using the correct version of our game. So, apologies for missing some of these out during the development process, but as you can imagine, it's quite difficult to create a game while telling people how to create that game. <laughs> so, we'll just jump straight into this and we'll try and blast through these as quick as we can. So, we're going to start off by checking out our camera size and our alien array size. So if we just play our game and we start it up, we can see that there's not that many aliens in here. We could do with a few more. And I don't know if you saw that, let me just show you that again. On certain screen resolutions, because we've heard coded in the positions where the aliens need to move left and right, we do clip over the screen slightly. Like this. So we can fix that by editing the camera size. So currently we up this to 6.5. I'm going to up this to 8. So now if we just run in and play this game again, we should see our elements are slightly smaller, but I'm fine with that. And the aliens don't clip over the edge. And if we lower our resolution, it's not a landscape game, we lower our resolution, we can see that our aliens are still within the confines of the game area. So let's add a few more aliens into our alien block. So that's in prefab, alien set, we'll just drag this over. And what we can go ahead and do is we can select our aliens that are on one of the sides. So we'll go for the left side. We'll select all five of these copy and paste, and move them over one. Now, where are we on this? Maybe one more. There we go. And now we should be able to update uh, prefab, which we can't. So what we can do, we can unlink this prefab, remove it from our alien sets, and drag that back in. So now we're probably going to need to amend our, is it in game manager? It is. Put in that alien set again into our game manager. So let's just check this is working fine. We can play. We'll drop in and that's a much healthier looking set of aliens. Next up, we have our aliens not actually moving as quickly as we'd like them. So easy way to fix that inside our alien master what we'll do, we'll set the horizontal move distance to be 1, uh, 0 0.1 rather, instead of 0 0.05. And we'll set the vertical distance to be 0 0.25 rather than 0 0.15. Now if we pop back over into our game and play it, we should see that our aliens are moving much quicker. And they are. But we can notice that uh, we start too high up now. So if we just pop back in here. Our start Y, let's have a look at where we think we should be starting. We remove the main menu and just pop in the in-game for reference. 
what we can do, we can go ahead and move our player and our shield down a little bit now. We know that we've got that little bit more room to spur. And we'll just check that against another resolution, which all look fine. Another portrait, fine, and portrait, that's fine. Okay, so we can move these down here now. One thing we do want to check is whereabouts does a mothership spawn? I set this in script, don't I? Silly, silly me. What am I doing? That's public, that's why negative 4.6. There we go, that should do. And we're back where we want to be. Right, so where is this mothership? Okay, so we'll pause the game there. Select this. And we want the mothership to be about here. So 4.45, yeah, that's fine. So we can take that. This is being controlled inside our alien master. And we have mothership spawn position. So we want our Y to be 4.5F. So that should take care of that problem. What have we got next? Okay, so we want the game to end when at least one alien gets too far down. So again, we're going to drag in our alien set and we're going to bring this down to the point where we want to end the game. We'll select this guy and we'll pull him out just for now. We need to unpack it from the prefab. Select this guy, pull him out and see what his actual global position is. That's very low down. That can't be right. Why is he so far down? I've dragged him into the bloody canvas, that's why. <laughs> okay, so negative three, we'll say, is a maximum Y value. So we can go ahead and open up our alien master, and where we check for our movements, we'll add another integer value in here, and that'll be called Y max. We'll set that to zero. So after we've moved, we're going to check if all aliens i dot transform dot position dot y is less than a max y value that we're going to set up at the top. If it is, we'll increment y max by one, and then if y max is greater than zero. We want to initialize game over. We can add max y in here by doing private const float max y equal to th negative three. So what is our menu? Open game over and we're static. So that's menu manager dot open game over. So that should fix that. Let's just go ahead and double check this. We can get rid of these, get rid of that, and let it spawn in of its own accord and see if we can speed this process up. We can pause, and I'll drag all this down, then we'll unpause, and it does. Okay, so our game ends now. What we could actually do is just make that a little bit higher up. So we'll make that negative 2.75. That should be fine. Next, we'll quickly link up our mute button, which is part of our main menu. We can click on this, add the on-click event, and this time we need to drag in our audio manager, and we should have a toggle mute, and we do. So let's double check this. So we'll mute that, and we should have no sound effects. And that's fine, we go back to the main menu, Toggle. Okay, there's something wrong with our muting. Let's go and check this out. That's why we need to add our else statement in our toggle. So let's try that again. So we can mute. We have no sounds. Go to the main menu. Play. And we have sounds. Perfect. That was nice and quick. So now let's have a look at saving our high score. So that shouldn't be too difficult to do. What we can do, we can open up our UI manager and we'll create one more static method. That will be 
public static void high score check. So we know high score check, we're going to want to do the exact same again, but this time we're going to be checking our instance.high score against our instance. Score. So if our high score is less than our current score, we've beaten our high score, so we'll set it to score, we'll refresh the UI, and we'll also save. So that will be save manager dot save progress. And we'll make sure we call high score check whenever we're returning to the main menu from a game over screen. So we'll call UI manager dot high score check there. So let's check this is working by... Okay, I forgot to record that entire section. Um, I'll just give you a quick overview of what I did. I didn't do much. I changed the high score check to check the current high score against the score. I then called update high score, which I took out of the, uh, the if statement check, and I passed in the current score. Then I saved the progress. And I'm now calling check high score from whenever we open the game over menu. So as we can see, if I play the game, I should already have a high score of 150, which I do. So if I shoot and I beat that high score, so that's 200, 250. I can use my cheats menu to open the game over. Return to the main menu and come back, and 250 is my high score. Sorry about not recording that. Uh, I thought I'd click the button, but evidently I hadn't. I was talking to myself for a long time. <laughs> Next up, we're going to create a new script, and we're just going to call this main menu. And this is going to be for our social buttons. So this is going to be really simple. I've already done a tutorial on this, so I'm just going to fast forward through all this and then give you a quick overview. So as you can see, all I've done, I've got three methods that are going to be attached to buttons, one for each of my buttons, and that call each one calls application.openURL, and then that's my URL for my Instagram, if I spelled Instagram right. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So we just connect these up like any other buttons. So we'll connect this to our main menu, do Facebook first, on-click event, main menu in, functions, main menu, Facebook, and rinse and repeat. So now if we just give this a quick test run, play the game, click Facebook, we see it's opened up a Facebook page, click Instagram, we can see that it's loaded up the Instagram page and finally click on YouTube and we see it's loaded the YouTube page. Perfect. Next up, I'm just going to quickly add a new text mesh pro element onto my main panel. This is going to be called version and I'll just put in a V1.0 for now. Set this to match uh, regular fonts and position it where I need it to be, which is going to be right here, and then anchor this. In fact, we'll put this in the top right, just so it's not covered by a banner ad. So we'll put this up in the top right-hand corner right here, and we'll just set this colour to our... We'll set it to our standard green, actually, so it stands out a little bit more. And then inside of our new main menu script, what we're going to do, we're going to create a... Public text mesh pro using tm pro version and in start we're going to set version dot text equal to v plus application dot version. So if we just hook that up like so and play the game, we should see this changes. And it does. We're currently on version 0.1. Like I say, I just like having that in there so I can always ask the user what version they're currently using to make sure that any issues that they're experiencing haven't been fixed in a later release. And really quickly, one last thing that I've done here is I've created a few more alien sets. Now, the way that I did that, I just dragged in my complete alien set, 
and deleted a few of the aliens out of each one. So we have different shapes going on like this. So when we play the game, we'll pick a random alien set out of our list to spawn in. Like this. So it just adds that bit of variety whenever we're playing. And the added challenge of having less aliens in from the start means that we're going to be moving faster from the start as well. And I think that's our game completed. So well done to you if you've managed to watch this entire series. But if you have made it this far, make sure you tune in for the last episode, which is going to be building this and uploading it to the Play Store. So I hope to see you over there and I hope you've enjoyed this series.